Google services were absent from Huawei devices since the Mate 30 Pro. And to a decent degree, there were possibilities to install Google services still on those devices like the Mate 30 Pro, like the P40 Pro and so on. But they were not really official like now, because now we have an official way, an application stored in the app gallery from Huawei that's even supported and gets updated regularly. And this application is called Gbox and it's yeah, officially available in the Huawei app gallery. And in this video, let's get rid of the Mate 30 Pro and let's get the P60 Pro. I want to show you how to install these services, Google services using the Gbox application on your device. But not only those here, I want to show you the commonly used Google apps. Do they run on the P60 Pro? Can I get my contacts synced? And I will compare it with the Pixel 6 that I have here and the commonly installed Google applications, the top 10 or top 5, I don't know how many there are, of applications that people use and how to get them running on the P60 Pro and how easily can it be done. So let's get started. So bit of theory first, Gbox, what is this even? So you might know Harmon US or Emotion UI phones like the P60 Pro that I have here. It's running on Emotion UI 13.1 that underneath there has Harmon US and Android uh, AOSP. And what Gbox does is because you cannot modify the core system, so Harmon US or AOSP as a normal user, to install Google applications. So what they do is simply they install themselves as an app. So they're just taking themselves and install themselves as an app because here they can put Google services, Google mobile services inside of the app. And uh, this case, Gbox is realizing this with the open source technology called MicroG. But because MicroG is not working so well on Huawei devices, what they are using is a fork of MicroG called Lighthouse that they're using here. And the cool thing about this one is that everything in this box they can modify and they can prepare so they can simulate the whole operating system that we have here that's called Emotion UI or Android. They can simulate this in this G box. This is why it's called box. It's Google in a box. So it's not an emulation. They're not emulating anything. In the easiest possible way, you can say they're simulating an, their own system. They are part of the system here where they can put Google mobile services in there. And this allows them to install all applications. All Google applications that we have here can be installed inside of this Gbox. So this is the important part here. They are installed in this container, in this box called Gbox. This is not completely uh, not completely different from the other operating system. So we can still via Gbox contact the other operating system, but those applications think that they're running on this Android version with Google mobile services in this box here. So they don't have direct access to the system uh, uh, yeah, above them, basically. So enough of the theory. Let's show, let's show you how this works in practice. So here we have uh, the P60 Pro and its Emotion UI desktop or home screen. What we want to do is first go into the app gallery and here we simply search for Gbox and there you can see Gbox. I just hit install, it will be installed and uh, yeah, after it is installed we can simply click on it and open it up, agree to the privacy policy, then we can disable the battery optimizations. This is because Gbox has to be running for all the other applications inside of Gbox to be running. Otherwise, you don't get notifications and so on. So we disable this. And here it gives us a step-by-step -step guide on how to use this. And basically, we can start already installing the applications that it is recommending here 
like YouTube, Google, Facebook, Instagram, Google Maps, Google Photos, Google Drive. So you get all the apps that you might need. But what I would recommend here right now is not using one of those here. Just go to the website of gboxlab.com and go to App Availability and download the apps from here because what you will do then is a very clever thing because if i install something from within gbox every time the youtube application i can create a link to this youtube application for example but it will run under the context of gbox what i can do for when i'm downloading the app from the website is create a separate icon that is like linking also into gbox but the app will be treated as a separate app. So I can download here, for example, the uh, YouTube application from here. And this will be treated as a separate app and you can configure it as a separate app because otherwise Gbox, you have to configure notifications, always allowed and su such things. And here you can configure the YouTube app by itself, like which kind of uh, notifications I want to receive and such things. So download, for example, YouTube from here and uh, you click on, yeah, it's going to install. You click on install here. And what this does is if you open it up, it will ask for Gbox to allow to do stuff. But the cool thing here is it will open up. It will take a while for, for it to run. There we go, now we have YouTube running. It will create a separate icon and not only a separate icon that you can use like short search subscriptions everything like you normally would do but you can also go in and click here and you will see it's its own application here called youtube it has a different version number uh, but you can set the notifications for this app separately and they can be differently to what you set up for the gbox application himself i think this is pretty forward and the next thing that you can do is, of course, install all the applications that you want. So what kind of applications do we usually have on an Android phone? So I have here with me my Google Pixel 6 and you can see some applications here. Besides the Play Store, we have Google Maps, we have Gmail, Photos, YouTube. YouTube I already installed. Photos, Gmail and Maps is something that we want to install right now. So let's go in here. Let's go one step back. And we can now say, okay, I want Gmail here as well. Click download, click download. And I can then also have Gmail here, install and open it up. And it will take a while on the first time because it's initializing some stuff. But afterwards, you can see, got it new to Gmail. I can add an email address and can add whatever account I want to have. If I want to have a Google account, just wait a second, log in with your credentials here and then you can use the uh, Google app as well. So let me do this quickly. And there we go. So I'm now in the Gmail application. Don't have like emails here because the account is brand new, but yeah, I'm in the Gmail uh, account. And the cool thing is if I'm logged in there, I can also log in automatically in all the other Google Class, applications mal, das das that I install this auch. way. As you can see here, I'm also logged in here which is quite interesting. And yeah, this way I can install many, many applications. And the cool thing here about this, if you uh, want to install an application just like Google One, you can install here, but Google Drive, for example, it allows you all other applications that depend on Google Drive for backup, just like, for example, WhatsApp. It allows you to use uh, this Google Drive and the backup function or already backed up data uh, within WhatsApp to be imported back in here. So if I go in here line, I have here Microsoft Teams and all the other Twitter, for example, but also the WhatsApp messages. So if you are using WhatsApp and you have a backup installed on Google Drive or backup of WhatsApp um, backed up on Google Drive, you can import it if you install WhatsApp via this method here, uh, which is quite interesting as well and works like a charm. And of course, Google Photos, I can also install this way and have then all my Google apps installed in a very fine manner. I don't need to touch the Gbox app itself, only if I want to install applications that are not here right now. But you can see I have all those apps installed. They take a while on first glance to start up, but 
just wait a second. So here we have Google Photos. Probably shouldn't be any photos. Are there a few photos still? Uh, anyway, if you go into Google Drive, for example, I was there before, wasn't I? No, I didn't start it before. I uh, can say, okay, use, allow me to use everything here. And yeah, I have now here some uh, data. But YouTube, for example, immediately there, you can see after I opened it up one time, there's a short while that is like switching to something, but then it's opening up everything and you can use backups and so on. But what if you want to install an application that is not showing up here? Um, like, for example, I think YouTube Studio, I don't see YouTube Studio here. YouTube Music is there, but I don't see YouTube Studio. So what you can do is go into the Gbox application and you can search here for this application. But if you don't find it here, what you can do is like search app name and then you can search for YouTube Studio. And it should appear here. There we go, YouTube Studio. You can click on it and it will get you to the Google Play Store actually. And you can click on, on install here. And this will install the application within the Gbox uh, app. And uh, yeah, shortcut has been created as well. So if I go out here, you can see there's a YouTube Studio shortcut. If I can click on this, it will go in here directly and show me my YouTube statistics on YouTube Studio as well. So this is working fine. And now I have like almost everything uh, yeah, that needs to be working, working here on this um, phone. So almost all the Google services are working as you can see here. So what's the next thing? Where are the limitations? Yeah, the limitations start with Google Wallet, for example. So if I want to search for Google Wallet, you won't be able to use the payment function because this is something that is deeply secured within the Google operating system and the simulation kind of way is not working in this case um, because the APIs need to be exposed the same way also outside uh, to be, yeah, um, protected against uh, fraud. So if you search for Google Wallet, probably won't find anything here, uh, which is, I think, a good thing because you cannot really use the Google Wallet or Google Pay as an option here. So now that we installed all those applications, made sure that we can also return or recover backups from Google Drive, which is working fine, by the way. The only other thing that you might want to have is maybe in your contacts, you want to import all your Google contacts. So how is this done? This does not need the Gbox application by itself, but another application. Let me show you quickly how it's done. I'm back at my computer because what we have to do is now um, yeah, a bit of theory again. Devix is a program that can be used to synchronize CalDAV and CardDAV contacts. How does it help with Google? Because Google exports CalDAV and CardDAV, so you can just simply easily import them into your device. Devix is available on the F-Droid store for free because it's an open source, free and open source program. Uh, you can also get it from the Huawei App Gallery but there it will cost a little bit. So if I go to the app gallery here, you will see that it will cost, I think, what is it, four euros roughly. So if you want to buy it and uh, yeah, support the project, you can also buy it directly from the app gallery and install it on your Huawei device. Otherwise, you can also download it from the Android store, which is quite interesting. So what this allows you to do uh, is add your Google account. How does it work? First of all, you have to activate your two-step verification on your Google account. This is automatically done, I think, since uh, a few months already on Google. And then you have to create an app password. How to do this? Just click on this and it will give you an op option and you can read through how to enable two-step verification and how to sign in with your password to create your app password directly for DevEx. Just follow those instructions, very straightforward. And what you have to do then is go into your DevEx application and create a new account. And there you just put this URL in where you have to change, of course, the xxxexample.com to xyzz at googlemail.com or gmail.com. And then you can 
create an entry for calendar account, but also the address book from Google you can sync up. And the cool thing here about this one is that it will automatically sync. If you create new contact, they will be synced up to Google as well uh, as uh, yeah, all the old contacts which is quite nice of an improvement. So this allows you to use all the Google contacts and Google calendar entries within your Huawei P60 Pro. So I showed you now how to install Google applications via the Gbox application on your Huawei P60 Pro. This of course works on the Mate 50 Pro, on the Mate 40 Pro, on the P40, P40 Pro and the Mate 30 Pro and the Nova devices, all those Huawei devices, even tablets that don't have Huawei uh, that don't have Google mobile services by default and it is running nicely as you can see here all those apps I have installed here are working nicely there's sometimes a little bit of a lag when opening up one of those applications but uh, usually it is quite quick Google Chrome is working as well as you can see here the Google app as well is working as you can see here so yeah it is working fine so not all of the apps are working for sure like the google wallet and google pay option is not working which might be very interesting for some people but most of the applications from google are working so you get a nice good workaround that is supported by the gbox team and that also takes care of your privacy because of course it's open source and they would not dare to sell your data because this would be a total disaster for them and uh, yeah uh, credibility for Huawei would be also completely gone so I think I have trust in Huawei that they are checking out uh, Gbox and the Gbox application and figure out if uh, they are violating privacy rights or not anyway that's it for this uh, video where I showed you how to install and use Google applications on your Huawei devices if you have some questions I'm gladly answering them in the comment section down below. That's everything for this video. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching and until the next time. Bye.